So hi everyone, my name is Joshua Nichols, and today I'd like to talk to you about visual prosthetics, hence the title Bionics, Seen into the Future. Now, I'd like you to consider for a moment the importance of vision. Specifically, I'd like you to consider what it would be like to actually lose this function, if not completely, at least partially. The reason why I ask you this is because I want you to consider what life must be like for the some 13 million Australians of whom suffer from some form of vision loss. So as of 2018, of those 13 million, 411,000 have cataracts. 131,000 are either completely or partially blind. And 244,000 have macular degeneration, the latter of which is the focus of this topic today. Now, macular degeneration, as you may know, affects the macula, which is responsible for the central field of vision. It specifically degenerates cone cells, which are the color sensitive and fine detail cells of the retina. In fact, you're using them to read these slides right now. And unfortunately, no known treatment or cure is available. Now, how does this impact people? Well, burden of disease is quantified with what's called DALYs or disability adjusted life years. And we measure this by totaling up the number of years live with disability, say 20 years, and the number of years of life lost due to illness. Now in Australia, as of 2004, based on a life expectancy of some 84.2 years, the total years lived with disability was in excess of some 40,000 years, and the years of life lost was more than 1,100. How does this impact the economy? Well, in 2009, per person aged 40 years and over, the average annual cost was nearly $29,000, and this had a nationwide impact of some 16.6 billion. Because of this, I'm going to make the case that for some people of whom regular interventions are not appropriate, visual prosthetics may be the best hope. Now, I'll admit, when you hear the term bionic eye, you probably think of science fiction. And I admit, images like this don't really help. But bionics are nothing new. The bionic ear, also known as the cochlear implant, is quite ubiquitous. It's been everywhere. So that makes sense that the next step could be visual prosthetics, the eye. Now, there's three main types of visual prosthetics, and they're classified by their modes of intervention. The first is cortical, which stimulates the visual cortex of the brain at the back of the head, and this is the most primitive. We then have epiretinal on top of the retina and subretinal, and these are the most sophisticated devices that exist. Now, there's currently a clinical trial taking place, the Argus II. This is an epiretinal, on top of the retina, prosthetic device, which is designed to restore vision to those with degenerative disorders of the eye, such as, but not limited to, age-related macular degeneration or retinitis pigmentosa. Now, what does a patient actually see? These are some computational reconstructions of the different Argus devices. As you can see on the bottom, with the Argus 2, there's some 60 pixels or 60 electrodes. And as you can see in that image, you can just about make out a face. You may not be able to identify who it is, but you can identify that it is a face. Hopefully with the Argus 3 and Argus 4, which are being designed, there will be some 200 plus pixels and a thousand pixels respectively. And as you can see on the image on the right, you could probably actually identify who someone is with this device. So in future, the future developments, hence the title, seeing into the future, what do I want to see happen with this technology? First and foremost, the cost. We need to work to improve affordability. Currently, the cost is going to be some 150,000 US dollars out of pocket. And who's going to pay for this? Is it the government? Is it the person? Subsidies? We need to figure this out. And the resolution. Currently, there's only 60 pixels. Compare that to the some 120 million pixels in the human eye. So we need to focus on this, increased electrotensity. All in all, I'd like to thank you to, for listening to my presentation. I think this is an exciting technology to be working in. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Thank you.